Okay, hey, this is John Chen with GeoTeaming, and I'm here with Katie Conifal at Constellation, and uh, she's going to share one of her meeting planners' secrets with us. How are you doing, Katie? I'm great. How are you, John? Fantastic. Um, tell me a little bit more about you and your position at uh, Constellation. Sure. So uh, I've been with Constellation for um, about four and a half years, and the current role that I'm in, it's part of our sales strategy and enablement team. And within that role, one of my big responsibilities is helping to coordinate a lot of the content that goes into the creation of our annual sales conference, as well as a number of other meetings. And so that's planning the sales conference is how John and I originally got to know each other. Yeah, fantastic. And too, and so uh, how big is your sales conference? And um, uh, kind of what is the kind of the key goals of your sales conference uh, in the past year? Sure. So our our sales conference this year had about 450 attendees, which was on the larger side for our annual meeting. Um, going into the sales conference, um, there had been um, some organizational changes. We'd recently acquired a company. So um, I think a large goal of the conference was to share what the goals were for the entire retail organization to everyone at the conference. And so that included all of our uh, our salespeople as well as a lot of our support roles. So people that help out with marketing and pricing. Um, so just to communicate what the goals were for the organization going into 2015. We had a really successful 2014 and just figuring out how we were gonna all work together as one team and be able to accomplish our goals for 2015. So we wanted everyone to walk out of there with a very clear picture of what those goals were and be able to go take action. So yeah, perfect. Communicate those goals and then integrate this new company as fast as possible, right? Exactly. Yep. Okay, cool. So what was the challenge that you had in the last year? Uh, one of the, the challenges you had at last year's conference? Yeah, so in the, the conference uh, before this past one, we, we did our, our first trade show and I wasn't in this role at the time, but a lot of the feedback I got was that, um, you know, we brought all these vendors um, and third parties that we work with to provide solutions to our customer to the trade show. And so we had a lot of, you know, a lot of experts in the field that were attending and we had all of our sales force there, but we didn't have great participation as far as the time that people took to actually come to the trade show and then the participation and engagement level with each of our external vendors. So one of the things that I was really focused on, this was my first year uh, helping to work on the sales conference and be a part of the trade show. So I was really focused on how we could increase our level of engagement at the trade show, get people excited to be there and get people to really interact with all of our, our vendors so that they walked away having a better understanding of who those vendors were and how they could ultimately work with them to develop um, maybe solutions that we hadn't thought of before to solve some of our customers' needs. So basically, too, that's that's one of the challenges, you know, it was so tough. I know you weren't part of it, but basically someone put a lot of energy in collecting all the people for this trade show. And then, uh, you know, I think one of the key challenges was that, that people left very early. Is that right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, there was, you know, I think we didn't the first year maybe do a great job of creating what that expectation was. And so yeah. people may have come for the first part, but there was really – not a lot of incentive to stick around. So people showed up, um, but by the end of the trade show or you know, even with an hour plus to go, um, there were really not that many people still there. And so that's you know disappointing internally as well as to our vendors that we brought in who have traveled yeah. to be at the event and are expecting a certain level of participation from our sales force. So I really, you know, my goal was to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place and then do everything I could to keep them there for the entire event. So how'd you come to the solution then? What, what did you see uh, or what led you to one of the solutions that you used for this conference? Sure, yeah, so it was, it was kind of a, an interesting process because okay. we spent a lot of time, we basically had one night to work with and that we went back and forth between with all the different leaders within the organization about what was, how that night should be spent. Was it better spent doing a networking evening because we had a lot of new names and faces in the organization and it was important with everyone in one spot for people to have time to get to know one another? 
or was it more important to do the trade show again and give people the experience of learning about what all of our, our different partners do? And people felt very strongly on both sides that there was value to each. And so, um, you know, I walked out of a meeting and just thought maybe there's a way to combine the two. And someone else um, within our organization who had attended um, a, a trade show had actually a book um, your book, John, on uh, about geo-teaming and the different options that you all provide. And so I sat there and just kind of flipped through it and went to the website and read about gamification, which was not a concept that I was familiar with at all uh, prior to prior to the sales conference. And I kind of read through the information and thought, gosh, you know, this is this really sounds like something that would help us accomplish both of those goals. So it would it would, you know, help us solve the networking component. We could create missions that were designed to get people to network with each other, yep. make it fun. And then we could also incorporate the educational aspect that we're looking to achieve through, through the gamification and the missions that we just design around all of the vendors that we're going to have there. So to me, it sounded like an ideal solution. So I reached out to geo teaming and had the initial call and, you know, just immediately felt like this was going to be the right decision for us. That's fantastic too. And so, <clears throat> and the speaking that I've been able to do, I've, I've been doing a lot of polling around meeting planners around gamification. And then now it's finally, it wasn't around 40 to 50% about people who've even heard about gamification. It's now closer to the 80%, but the number of meeting planners who's actually implemented a, a gamification program is less than 10%. So it really kind of puts you at the forefront when you selected this idea that gamification at these conferences is just really starting to show up, at least in the way that, that we're doing it, right? This is beyond the old punch card. This is, you know, high tech and, and worked on people's cell phones and, and other types of uh, elements for that. Yeah. So, um, so we, uh, talk about a little bit about the solution that we created for it and then the results that you got from it. Sure. So I think one of the, one of the best things for me about working with geoteaming is that I knew up front my two goals were around networking and education with our external vendors. And when I shared that and communicated that with geoteaming during some of our initial phone calls, I felt like they very quickly picked up on what that vision was and were able to make me feel very comfortable that the game that we designed was going to accomplish both of those. So the, the solution that we came up with, we decided to, to design some of the missions around the networking component. So we asked people to you know, take a picture of someone that you've never met before, take a picture with someone that works um, with the company that we had recently acquired, you know, um, write down something new that you learned about someone that you didn't know before. So something that kind of, you know, forced in a, in a fun, natural way, um, that interaction with people at the sales conference that, that you may not otherwise have interacted with. Um, and then to accomplish the, the networking piece, we reached out to all of our, we had 30 external vendors there. We reached out to all of them and, and I asked them the question, you know, what's the most important thing that you want someone walking out of this trade show knowing about your company? Yeah. And so for them, I think that was really appealing because that was their opportunity to say, okay, you know, here are the most important things about my company that if someone's going to want to work with me after this trade show, this is what they need. This is what they need to know. And this is what I want to be left in their, in their memory. So that gave them a chance to you know, give me some information. And then I shared that information with geoteaming and they were able to come up with questions that we built as our missions into the app that, um, you know, caused people to engage with the vendor to be able to solve to solve the mission and earn points. So it made it fun. Um, it accomplished both of the goals that we were looking to achieve and, um, you know, doing it through, through social media just felt, you know, it felt new to people. It felt innovative. It also really tied in with one of our themes of our sales conference this year, which was powered by innovation. Right. So that was the other piece that I think, you know, made this work so well this year. We weren't using, as you mentioned, a punch card or a stamp as we had done in the, in the past year. This was something new, something fresh, and, and something innovative that tied directly to our theme. Yeah, just for, for people who didn't know that, so conference gamification, of course, is using game mechanics in a non-game setting. And in this particular case, we used a, um, um, a smartphone app 
uh, that ran on Apple and Droid, and it really had customized missions in there uh, that really got people to engage. And of course, they got points for it. Uh, and there were also different places too, where if they completed missions, they were entered to um, win a prize or could win a prize instantly. And so uh, really some key things that, that happened with there too, is that we engaged our audience beforehand. So we got them, you know, because it was a brand new program, we really found some advocates who started working on the program early. Uh, and then as we got there, we signed a lot of people up and, and then making sure that we really got a uh, high adoption with it. Um, some other things that we customized for you too was because you had the two companies coming together, we had the networking actually uh, with missions where one person from one company needed to meet somebody from the other company. So you're also achieving some of your goals about you know, getting those people to know each other faster. So I think it was really fantastic with that theme. You know, that hyper networking, uh, I'm looking here on our stats, so we, there was 438 networking missions and somebody actually made a comment that um, by doing some of the missions beforehand, it put a face to a name and it made it easier for them to recognize and meet that person when they got on site. Yeah, um, I think that was one of the coolest things about it that we did some of those pre-conference missions. It got people excited about the game, it got people excited about coming to the conference, it helped people put names to faces that were you know, a large organization and were spread out over a number of smaller satellite offices. And so, you know, you, you email with these people on a regular basis and for people to be able to see the app ahead of time and say, oh my gosh, that's that person that I reach out to regularly, but I had no idea what they actually looked like. Now I yeah. know who to look for when I get to the sales conference to go have a conversation with that I definitely want to make sure I meet. And those connections become really valuable because now people feel more comfortable picking up the phone or um, they know they can get more done when they really feel like they know that person. Um, let's talk about one other item too. We, we really worked on making sure adoption. So while we had adoption before the event and of course uh, uh, while they registered, uh, tell us, let's talk about um, how you involved your executive management and so they were bought into this program. Sure. So that, that was obviously a, a key piece of this was getting our sales leadership to buy into this. The more, you know, I felt like they had a presence on the app and things that they were uploading, the more I felt like the rest of our organization would buy into it as well. So prior to the event, I tried to work with all of our senior leaders to make sure they knew that this was happening, that they had the app downloaded on their phone. I said, can you just submit you know, a selfie of yourself? Can you complete at least one mission prior to the event? And I think most of, most of them did that. And then at the actual event, um, I think, you know, John, you had the great suggestion of doing some type of main stage support with one of our senior executives. And so we have, um, you know, one of our, one of our senior sales leaders, he's, you know, great on stage. And so he seemed like the right person to yeah. pick to do this, that he was really going to, you know, make it fun, make it kind of silly, engage the audience. So he got up there and we had, um, you know, created a mission that would show up on everyone's phone ahead of time. So he got up there and he kind of kicked off the event. He told people what it was going to be. He was the last speaker prior to everyone gathering back in the ballroom that evening for the trade show. So it was the right time for him to be making this announcement. And he stood up on stage and he said, now everyone, you know, get out your phone, pull up the app. That mission popped up right away on everyone's app. And it said, you know, take, take a selfie of yourself with Andrew on stage. <laughs> and so, you know, it was silly and he you know, probably made a funny face or something, but it got everyone using the app if they hadn't already been exposed to it yeah. prior to getting to the sales conference. So I think, I think that was huge. And just seeing, you know, Andrew, that Andrew had bought into it, seeing one of your sales leaders up on stage doing it, I think made people even more um, excited about the trade show and, you know, gave people a reason to come back later that evening uh, to, to even show up at the trade show. Yeah, we had over, I think, uh, over 140 people who completed that mission, and everyone who completed it actually got entered to win a prize uh, of something I think that Andrew helped support. And so um, that small technique, uh, and it only took like maybe two or three minutes, but right. really had a huge impact. Um, Definitely. So, so well, then why don't you talk about like uh, um, the results at the trade show and then, you know, what, how you felt about it afterwards at the end of it. Yeah, so, you know, I think the evening – the evening came to an end and that was that was my big portion of the sales conference. So in addition to being really relieved that the <laughs> event was <laughs> was over and I had survived through all of it, um, you know, 
I felt really great about it. I looked around the room during the event and the room was packed. You know, the, some of the booths uh, for our vendors had lines of people waiting to talk to them. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and as the event, you know, we, um, we had to work to get the room quiet enough to even announce the results at the end of the event because everyone was just having a great time and talking. So it was almost a, a struggle to quiet them down enough to make, to make the final um, announcements at the end and announce the award winners. And so the event ended and people just stayed. People kept hanging out, people kept talking. So that really made me feel like, you know, not only have we accomplished the educational component, but we've turned this into a networking event. So we've still got hundreds of people here that are, you know, that that are talking to each other, that are getting to know each other, that are, you know, learning about one another and what they do within the organization. So I felt, you know, like it was a, a huge accomplishment. I was really happy with the way that the that the event had gone. I felt like from the very beginning, you all had understood my goals and really helped me to accomplish them. You know, our some of our, our senior leaders that came up on stage to give the awards, they were very pleased with how the how the app had worked and how the trade show had gone. I got yeah. a lot of really great feedback from them. When we did our our sales conference survey, the oh. the app, and I probably haven't shared this with you, John, the, the <laughs> app was one of the things that came out as a as a highlight of the conference. Um, I, you know, people felt like it did definitely increase networking, that it did increase their engagement with the vendors, that it was something new and exciting, you know, across the board, whether it was from an individual salesperson to one of our senior leaders. Wow. The, yeah, the, everyone was very pleased with it. And, you know, we're, we're looking to do something again along similar lines next year. So I think that definitely speaks to the success of the, of the game. Well, I know your primary goal really is a, a, like a, what I remember hearing is like about, about after an hour of a three hour trade show in the previous year, almost everyone had gone. Right. And, and this year it was it was about three to three and a half hours for this trade show. And what I love to tell people about that is that not only did they stay. Right. They stayed to the end. And it was it wasn't just anyone announcing on the stage. I think it was two senior VPs on stage yeah. trying to talk and had to like to get everyone to quiet down a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> they had to get a little rowdy about it. And then. Um, <laughs> Not only that, that they uh, you closed the bars down, and they stayed an hour after they closed right. the bars they down. Right, they wheeled the bar out, and everyone <laughs> stayed in the room. And then once they kicked everybody out of the room, right, you and I actually walked through the bar, the hotel bar, and all those same people were still talking with each other. Right, yep, exactly. And so I think that was really kind of one of the key successes. If that was your key goal, that was the key result with it. Um, in addition to that, um, we got almost 50% of the people – at the conference, right, playing this game, which is amazing for a first year um, uh, program. Quite often in a first year program, we tell people that expect sometimes 10 to 20%, but by using a lot of these techniques and getting you know advocates for it and that senior support, uh, that's how we got a lot of key success for this. Um, there was also 937 measured booth visits. So those are just the ones we measured. There were still a lot of other people who weren't playing, but were still actively engaged. Uh, and meeting inside of all the booths. But it was nice uh, that the vendors had, you know, they could tell how many um, people that we got to their booth because of the game. And then um, I think one other, the last, uh, the key pieces from that, um, oh, was the educational value. So one of our winners for the contest, uh, her name was Anne. You know, she, we, she won a, like, you know, prize like an iPad or something like that. But I talked to her, I said, so did you learn something during this conference? She goes, oh, yeah. He goes, I sell to the education market and all of my educational proposals have to have a grant inside of it. But today I finally met the grant team and they said they would custom write me anything. And this is a resource that's been available in the company, but she didn't know she had it. And she yeah. finally met the right person and she said this was going to help her sales immensely. Yeah. So that was one of the other key results yeah, that I, I mean, saw. And, and that's, that's a big piece of our sales conference. You know, this is the one time each year that we bring everyone out of all of our different offices together. And that's, that's the kind of story that we want to hear happening. That's really cool. Well, is there anything else you'd like to share to any other meeting planners, you know, who are, because a trade show now too, right? In, in general, I think in the industry, trade shows sometimes are starting to struggle because um, they've been around for so long or, or just getting that key engagement for it. And so making sure that you have a successful trade show, I think is, is a super important part of planning a conference. Do you have any other tips for the meeting planners out here who are working on um, trade shows? I think for me, one of the biggest pieces um, was just around 
making sure that you clearly communicate your vision and making sure that you and whoever you're working with to create that vision are yeah. on the same page. I think for me, that was, that was huge. The fact that I shared that vision and it was immediately understood and we could get to work right away on figuring out how we were going to accomplish my two goals is, is a big part of what made this successful. Yeah. You know, I, I just, I feel like sometimes a lot of time is spent up front trying to, you know, get both parties on the same page and you're not necessarily aligned and different, you know, to the two different people have different goals. So making sure you, you have, you share a shared vision, yes. I think is a big piece of it. And, um, and the other part, I think that, that helped the trade show be successful and helped, um, you know, not just satisfaction from our leaders internally, but also set gain high levels of satisfaction from our vendors was the fact that we shared this, shared what this app was with our vendors, you know, well in advance. I kind of explained what the difference was from the, the stamped version of the hard copy passport that we had done the year prior to the app and how it was going to, how it was going to benefit them. And by pulling them into it and making them feel like, you know, they could choose the pieces of information they wanted people to walk away with. Um, that really helped us be successful as well. So I think that across the board, we were able to, to gain satisfaction from you know, our, our sales organization, our leaders, as our, our vendors. And, you know, those are three important stakeholders. So I think that by sharing that vision and have, keep getting everyone on the same page early on, that ensured the satisfaction of, of everyone. Yeah, so let me just, let, I'll last with this, I'll close with this last piece too, which is it really gets to the, the key part, right? Where meeting planner is not just about logistics, but really the key that you've got here, Katie, that you're bringing to your company is that a meeting planner is, is a strategic partner, right? Helping to achieve um, that team and, this, and the company achieve their goals. And I think uh, out of all those things, that is the most important thing that, that all meeting planners should make sure and position themselves for and, and by doing your goal setting up front and the, um, the aligning of visions before you do anything else, really make sure that everything that you're doing fits in that place. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Well, thank you so much time for your Katie. Yeah. I really appreciate your time yeah. and uh, we look forward to the next time that we get to share another meeting planner secret. Sounds great. Excellent. Thanks, John. You're welcome. Okay. So cut and uh, guess who just joined us? Jeanette. Hi, Katie. Hi, how are you? I'm good, 